the Titanic sank long before it hit the iceberg. It's just that no one noticed. In the end, what was bound to happen, happened. Because what sank it wasn't the ice, it was humanity itself. And this was one of the most expensive management mistakes in history. Yes, as you know, the Titanic movie told a love story. The truth, however, is a story of engineering, arrogance, and neglect. Even today, the sinking of the Titanic is often described as a natural disaster. But nature only announced the result. The cause had already been written by people. The year was 1912. The Industrial Revolution had ended. Steel, steam, and electricity had expanded the limits of life. Some people had begun to see themselves as superior to nature. Nature now seemed conquered by these advances. There was a belief that technology could protect humanity. The Titanic was the embodiment of that belief, designed as the world's largest, most luxurious, and unsinkable ship. But that single word, unsinkable, would become the most expensive word in engineering history. Don't listen to this story as a tragedy of the past, because the story of the Titanic still continues in your own time. Even today, we are building new Titanics every day. Bigger systems, safer technologies, faster decisions. Yet inside all of them hides the same flaw, the human factor. The ship's chief designer, Alexander Carlyle, had planned for high safety bulkheads. But the ship's owner, Bruce Ismay, wanted a more magnificent interior. Grand staircases, wide halls, luxurious cabins. All of that extra space was gained by cutting from safety. The height of the bulkheads was reduced to three meters. These walls, which should have extended above the waterline, could no longer contain the rising water. This simple design choice would later turn into a disaster, where every second mattered. The Titanic had the capacity to carry 64 lifeboats, enough for everyone on board, but Ismay thought too many lifeboats would make the deck look ugly, so the number was reduced from 64 to 16. The total lifeboat capacity dropped to 1,178 people, yet there were 2,223 people on board. In other words, before the voyage even began, half the passengers were condemned to die. The British Board of Trade which regulated safety, raised no objection. That's because a law passed in 1894 determined the required lifeboats by tonnage, not by the number of passengers. The law hadn't foreseen a ship as massive as the Titanic. The ship complied with the law, but not with reality. The ship's hull was covered with steel plates, but not all the rivets that held them together were steel. In the bow, where space was tight. Workers couldn't use the hydraulic rivet machines, so they used iron rivets instead. Iron becomes brittle at low temperatures. It breaks easily in the cold. The very part of the Titanic that struck the iceberg was held together by these iron rivets. When the collision occurred, the rivet snapped. The ship didn't shatter, it opened up. In fact, later research showed that only five compartments were breached, but because the bulkheads were too low, water quickly spread from one to another. April 14th, 1912. The night was clear, windless, and the sea was glassy. The moon was nowhere to be seen. You might wonder, if the sky was clear, why wasn't the moon visible? That night, the moon was in its new moon phase, invisible from Earth. Normally, waves crashing against an iceberg would create foam and reflections, giving lookouts a visual warning. But that night, there were no waves, no light. The iceberg was almost invisible. Back when the Titanic was still in Southampton, a last minute crew change took place. Officer David Blair, who left the ship in haste, accidentally took the key to the lookout locker with him. 
That small mistake meant the lookouts couldn't access their binoculars. No spare key was found. The lookouts had to scan the horizon with their bare eyes. In the dark, spotting an iceberg without binoculars was impossible. At 11.40 p.m., a lookout saw a silhouette in the darkness. The engines were stopped. The helm was turned. The ship needed 800 meters to turn. The iceberg was only 270 meters away. The Titanic didn't collide head on, but scraped along the side, the worst possible outcome. Five watertight compartments were torn open. The ship began taking in water at a rate of seven tons per second. The sinking process had begun. The Titanic had the most advanced wireless system of its time, but that didn't mean its communication was effective. That night, the radio operators treated safety messages as secondary. Six separate iceberg warnings were received. One came from the nearby ship SS Californian. We are surrounded by ice and have stopped. The Titanic's operator replied, shut up, I'm busy. Hours later, when the Titanic sent out its distress call, the Californian's radio was already turned off. The nearest ship didn't hear the call. The distant ones did, but they were too far away. When the lifeboats were lowered, order completely broke down. Some were launched half empty. Many male passengers were told there was no room, though empty seats remained. Those in the lower decks couldn't reach the boats in time because of locked gates. Class determined survival. Lifeboat number one departed with 12 people, number seven with 28. Each could hold 65. The water was minus two degrees Celsius. A human body can stay conscious for about 10 minutes at that temperature, and death follows within 30 minutes. When the rescue ship Carpathia arrived, the Titanic was already resting 3,840 meters below. Most who didn't reach the lifeboats froze to death. Of 2,223 passengers, only 706 survived, about one-third. In 1914, the International Convention for the Safety of Life at Sea came into force. Every ship now had to carry enough lifeboats for all passengers. Radio communication was to remain open 24 hours a day, and the International Ice Patrol was established, still monitoring icebergs in the North Atlantic today. The Titanic sank, but humanity learned new standards. Every disaster, if analyzed correctly, becomes a teacher. The Titanic didn't test the limits of engineering. It tested the limits of human perception. And that test ended in failure. This story teaches us that technology can advance but if the human mind doesn't evolve at the same pace, progress turns into danger. I'm Curiosphere. If you want to explore scientifically proven, true stories with their flaws, mistakes, and dark secrets, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.